Hi everyone, Shana J here, One Heart Mission. And we are gonna be talking about mastering the moment with my dearest 30 year friend, Isaac George. And he is an, he is an astrologer extraordinaire because he adds his own personal wisdom, his knowledge and, and everything that makes you, for me, understand astrology way more than I ever thought I could. So thank you, Isaac, for being here and joining me today. So happy. Thanks, Shana. I really appreciate it. And it's an absolute joy to be here with you today. So it is a joy. We yeah, love our conversations, yeah. don't we? Absolutely. <laughs> it's like getting on a roller coaster with a bag of popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> I just got a visual of that one. <laughs> There ain't going to be much left in the bag at the end of the ride. But anyway, <laughs> <That's right. laughs> thank you for that introduction. Um, uh, yeah, I, I do have a different way with astrology, as I did have a different way with channeling back when you knew me when. Why? Um, yeah, you know, yeah, I, I told you that one time that some yoga teacher in Sedona called me a spiritual entertainer. I did not take offense of that at all. Not at all. I think I think we need more stand-up comedy <laughs> of right. some type or especially these days but right. i digress go ahead much more levity than these days are giving us it's way too serious yeah tell you know, give me a give me a couple of sentences to tell give encapsulate what you do so people can kind of get what i'm talking about i think the first thing i have to say and i'm owning this more than i even did 25 years ago is that mm -hmm. i'm a healer Mm -hmm. right and 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 a teacher i think those two things just summate um what that breaks down into what i'm working with people on is intuitive mentoring and astrology or evolutionary astrology is um a diagnostic tool a psychological and spiritual diagnostic tool and it's it's not where things end up it's where things begin and then beyond that yeah. is the creating the sacred space, creating the, 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 um, the sanctuary in which people can fall apart so they can come together, I guess. Absolutely. And you've really helped me since I moved, made the transition from the West Coast to the East Coast. Mm -hmm. And I'm settling in really, really well because of your advice and wisdom and what you showed me in my chart. And especially the astrocartography was just extraordinary. I had no idea, but then doesn't God always know best when you, every move I've made has taken me to a place that I would have never thought of, but yet it's turned out to be like a good astrological boost for me in my world. Well, that's great feedback because, you know, the thing about astrology is it's not perfect uh, as a divinatory tool you know um but it does kind of help explain the territory in the map and i mean map in a, a very general sense esoteric sense a life map mm -hmm. it's not just geophysical location yeah um, i found the same like epiphany around the astro cartography for me because i had that done for me three months before my first visit to sedona and everything that that astrologer said to me in Eugene, Oregon, came out exactly right. Wow. About not only the visitation, the times I went down to visit, because I went down first yes. to explore. I remember that. Then I came back again for another visit, and then I made the, then I made the move over a year later. Exactly. And, and basically, what, what, what she said, what Topaz said, was absolutely to a T accurate. Everything that she said to lock out, look out for, to pay attention to, and how it would manifest came to fruition over and over again. Yeah, this is phenomenal. Out. Yeah, it's amazing. It it's phenomenal. So I, I, I want to really thank you for for staying on that path. And certainly, I, I even think that the channeling that you started to do when we were living in Sedona um, was an extraordinary leap into kind of claiming the, the multi-dimensionality of the human being, which I think I would love for more people to be even interested 
you know, in finding out what that's all about, because it is really interesting. Well, it's interesting. It's, it's your second person in two days that's reflected this to me. And it, it, it basically, it's something I've never, I've shied away from talking about, you know, what would happen if I was just to have a conversation of what it was like to be that or be going through that process to be in a channel and, and having the opportunity to stand back from the time that those events were occurring and, and see it through new eyes and say, without any apologies or justification, this is what happened. I can't explain half of it. I just know that this was my reality for those 10 years or 12 years and, and do with it what you will. But this, this really did happen. And there were witnesses to the event. I know. I just, you know, it's, it's in my, my memory so strong that I, you know, you said just ground me on your first channel publicly. Oh, it, it and I, quite, and I yeah. held your feet. I sat at your feet and I held your feet and I kept you. I thought I was going to shoot off into space as well. Because you, because you went flying. And it was extraordinary for me getting to feel all that, all those different energies that you are and were at the time, but you know, that you are. Wow. Yeah. You, you know, and then. He, the, the aftermath was what I remember is like going to the <laughs> to the planet diner or whatever that name was that was that place the red planet red planet diner <laughs> and eating french fries and, and salads solar salads and, and french fries and it's like that was my grounding and a vanilla coke <laughs> right right <laughs> and, and I, wouldn't touch that stuff, I wouldn't touch that stuff with a 10-foot pole now it's like <laughs> Anyway, and we laughed a lot. Oh my God. That was the maze. I think that was the thing. I couldn't listen to the recordings. Oh, uh, I could never listen to the recordings. And I thought it was an oddball until I actually had another face to face meeting uh, where I had my first face to face meeting with Tashira Tachi Ren three years, be two years before, or one year before I moved to Sedona. And, and I said, you know, I can't listen to myself. She said, I can't listen to them either. Wow. I have to read the transcriptions. Because it's this odd, you know, to anybody who's ever had that experience, you know, to an outsider to say you're dissociative, you know, if you're going for a psychological perspective, um, you're dissociating and or it's some part of the subconscious, like uh, another persona coming through. Right. I, you have to understand, I investigated every aspect of this in myself for years, both during and after. I still don't have any final conclusions about it, but I, I do do find it interesting that that yesterday a very close friend of mine brought this up uh, again and, and just said, you know, this is part of who you are. This is part of what what happened. So why don't you right. feel comfortable about talking about it? People might get something from it. Well, that that's what I see. And um, because of how you've grown I feel like that putting yourself in an experience like channeling where you absolutely surrender your personality to whatever wants to be present in you and then through you, it, it does something to the psyche and ego in the personality. And I feel that it's, I said jump earlier, that it really does give you a jump or a new, such a new perspective that's so huge that you can share diff, way different level of things with, with the general public. And that is, that's your gift. That's a certain, there is a certain truth. There's a vastness to that. And at the same time in alienation, because the alienation mm -hmm. is, uh, as a fellow astrologer of mine once said to me, because of where I particularly have my North Node is in Aries, he says, if you aren't living and communicating and teaching from a perspective that's five to 25 years down the road ever, ever, ever had ahead of everyone else, you're not being your North Node in Aries. Because it's Hello. sort of like you're getting, you're getting that perspective and bringing it back from the future into the now. That's and true. some people are going, wow, that's exciting. And other people are going, you're nuts. Right. <laughs> I, exactly. I have my North Node in Aries as well. And it's, it is, it's a super, super challenge 
to to bring the two together. So, and and if you don't mind, I'd love to just dovetail this into living in the moment and and being you know becoming a master of the moment because you are doing that really well. You have lots of examples, I'm sure. So, <laughs> you know, because I mean, even before we started this week, you know, we're we're both. Um, making sure we're here on time and, and have fitting it in our schedules. And, and there was a little bit of moment that we needed to just yeah. keep claiming the moment. It's all good. The timing is perfect. Yeah. So tell me, tell me, um, what do you see are some of the challenges of living in the moment? What's going on right now? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what is it. <laughs> um, I think the, the the one of the challenges I would say I, you know this might put me at odds, but I'm used to it now. One of the biggest challenges I think we all face, anyone who's at a certain level of awareness about what this being in the now might mean or being in the moment might mean is feeling the existential pressure of what's going on globally is one big, huge insertion point into the now that, that to some people might find that an, intru an intrusion. It, it's an unwanted guest, right. right? But it's what's happening now. Right. Okay, it's what's happening now. The other intrusion is the medium itself, the internet itself. Um, it's what's happening now. But every one of these things needs to be reframed in a question. And the question is, does this support who and what I am? Yeah. Or is it interfere or distract from who and what I am? Good point. So when I when I approach things like online now, I see how it has fragmented so much of what we call our social fabric and our, our human family over mm -hmm. the last 20 some years. Um, at the same time, we keep inverting it and claiming it's bring humanity closer together because we can communicate in real time instantly. You're in Florida. I'm in the United Kingdom. We're having this conversation. Right. In the now. In the now. Exactly. In the now. And at the Even same time. Time zones too. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Five five time zones distinct. Five, yeah. And 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 we we sit here and go, wow, that's a miracle. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, it does create an artificial context mm -hmm. because it's only two-dimensional. I'm only able to either infer certain parts of Shana's energy and her consciousness interpolated through this electronic medium, mm -hmm. as opposed to if I were in the same room with you, what would that feel like, look like, and sense what would the sensate awareness of another human being living, breathing, you know, your, your energetic signature, your soul signature, that would completely fill in all the blanks, yeah. see? So when we're talking the now moment, I think we need to come into a, 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 a different relationship with what that moment either contains or is absent from that moment. That's and in this case, what we don't have is that human tangibility or organic tangibility. And at the same time, we have the ability to have this conversation but on what level, how many other levels is that interspersing, inter, inter relating with or interspersing with? And is it enough for somebody else to then in, you know, listen to this at some point in the next moment and say, I really get that. I really understand. You know, this is, you know, what's going on in the world is distracting me from who and, and what I want to really be and what I really want to do. Mm -hmm. um, to the extent that you place importance or focus on something will be the extent to whether it enhances or helps that or gets in the way. Yeah. So I, I, I don't know. I, <clears throat> I'm, I'm sort of in a place of beginner's mind around this thing called the moment. 
knowing, you know, the, the moment I mention the moment, it's gone. And right. it's behind me now. <laughs> and there's another one coming up. <laughs> But do I know what's going to happen in the next, next moment? No, that's both the wonder and terror of it. You know, next moment we could get smacked with an asteroid and be, all, you know, game over. Game over. Uh, exactly. But you know what? In the end, I think one of the things that helps me stay present is understanding this is all an experiment. And I, I, I used, when I first heard that concept seven years ago, I thought, well, that's an interesting way to look at it. Yeah. And now it's becoming more and more something I can rely on for staying present. Mm -hmm. It's all an experiment. Um, don't get personally invested with, with anything. Keep intending and working toward the highest and best outcome for, for yourself and, and, and choosing that for others. Mm -hmm. But to expect more than that in this moment yeah. will make you crazy. Yeah. Will make you crazy. Yeah. Uh, or yeah. extremely disappointed in human nature. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, there's, there's a lot, there's definitely a lot of feelings going on. And I, I completely agree with you. And, and you've made a very good point of exactly what I've been feeling. Um, in that the the dimensions of the feeling nature of living in this body in the experience of the self the self that i'm aware of and the multi-dimensionality of the self that i'm somewhat aware of and learning about and then you add to that the 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 bigger world the world and all of its mishigas if you will <laughs> And, and then who is, so, so maybe talk a little bit more about that phrase. This is an experiment. So how do you <laughs> see that? Cause I, I'm really curious of, of your point of view there. I think you, okay. I'm going to expand on that. And, and, you know, I don't want people walking away after hearing that and thinking, oh, you know, we're being experimented on. Yeah, um, exactly. That's why. <laughs> Let's be a little clear. <laughs> you know, there there is sort of a, 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 a certain feeling I think some people have had, or at least anecdotally, they think, oh, it's like, you know, I think this has been with human humanity for a long period of time. You can see it in the in the in the stories of, of Olympus, the gods of Olympus, toying with humans, uh, <laughs> acting out there like, you know, dysfunctional god goddess family on, on human beings. Uh, let's see what would happen if we put Hercules in this position. And, you know, there's this kind of like uh, chessboard kind mm -hmm. of feeling, you know, that kind of experiment. But this isn't that. Um, this isn't that. And that, I have to give credit where credit due. That phrase or that concept came from a guy named John Lash in 2013 in an interview he was doing with, um, with a woman named Derry Copel. And John's background is being a self-educated, self-realized um, uh, Gnostic master in the Gnostic traditions and Gnostic mysteries, uh, which are basically the feminine mysteries. And their traditions go back, you know, 5,000, 6,000 years. Uh, the Gnostics weren't just some phenomena that occurred 2,000 years ago around the time of, of Christ. But their understanding of the 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 cosmos and specifically our galaxy and this planet in the third spiral arm of this galaxy is that what we call the human race was the highest realization of a extensions of source creation known as the aeons and the aeons were like poets and scientists and painters and artists and they would create life forms just to see what would happen. Oh. And this was all impulsed from source, con source consciousness. And basically the idea about creating the human genome was the result of two of these aeon aeonic beings, these living intelligence streams of light coming together in a tantric embrace and creating the human genome in their image. And so the image was what was imparted into that, that genomic creation uh, was what they call in the Latin or the, or the Coptic 
uh, language, epinoia, which means divine imagination, versus any other mammalian creature up to that point in time or any other manifested creation, we possessed something they had, which was the ability to imagine and create from that imagination original things. And this uh, experiment was let loose into the third spiral arm of the galaxy with no compunction other than to observe and allow. And based on the on my recent realization, thanks to rereading the old conversations with God books, the ultimate expression of love is allowing. It's allowing. And so um, funny that this mythos of that 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 whole Gnostic mythos dovetails with scientific validation around the theory of what they call panspermia. And panspermia is the idea that certain organic life forms encapsulated um, in a protective shield of some kind float through space and then land in fertile little places and then start blossoming. So they might travel yeah, light the years. Of the name sperm. <laughs> yeah, panspermia, meaning it's universal seeding that comes from who knows where. And when the earth came into being, we came into being. Yeah. We found a place to land in so-called Germany. Um, and and the, 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 the blending of this gen genome with primate genome created what we know is Homo erectus, then Homo sapiens, and so forth. Right. Um, so, I mean, that's kind of like taking a little bit of anthropological license with the whole story, but we are directly related with the planetary intelligence that is supposedly the embodiment of one of these aeonic goddesses. That's why she, Earth has always been called by indigenous peoples, mother. Nice. Mother. And we are her children, but not in the human father, mother, child, parental stance. Uh -huh. We share her consciousness because we have that link. We have that epinoia. We have that ability to divinely imagine something out of nothing and create it. Right. So from this idea, he then came, went on to extrapolate. If you're looking around at the world today and you're seeing that things aren't in harmony with the original intent, our original path because we have forgotten our story and we have forgotten the story of the planet and where it came from we have forgotten our own story it's been hidden from us if we don't remember that we're in trouble if we don't remember uh, our intimate conversational communicational relationship with the planet and i.e by extension to the galactic core and by that extension to the center of this universe and all multiverses then we are lost we are traveling on a ship to nowhere because we don't remember where we set sail from and we don't know where we're going. Yeah. Um, however, from the aeonic or the source consciousness perspective, this is a wonderful experiment. And they're all hoping for the best outcome. Which would be up what? to them to interfere. They can't interfere. They can't, well, they can aid if called upon, but they can interfere. It's like the prime directive in Star Trek. You can't interfere with another culture yeah. without invitation or permission. Yeah. How many times have we heard that in the world of channeling or the world of, of, of healing work? You know, nope, sorry, can't do that without no. knowing that other person's giving permission. Yeah, absolutely. Or they've requested it directly. Absolutely. I even last night had a conversation with a 16 year old and we're talking about the world situation. And one example that I used was in the world of healing, there is no outcome. There's only the highest and best prayer. Yeah. So you don't impose your, yourself in your healing. You do, even if the person says, make sure that this broken leg is fixed. Yeah. I will say, I will pray for your healing. Yeah. And I will not pray for, I don't tell people this, but my own knowing is I will not pray for your leg to be fixed because God has the plan. I don't. And I'm not going to impose my will when thy will is already at place. Yeah. You had a broken leg because why? 
that's up to you and your your you know life your force experience. To, figure yeah. out, to experience, yeah, experience. right uh, and it's not fault finding you know it, it it's um I think one of the ways that, you know, in the staying in the moment or, or apprising yourself within the relationship that you have with the moment is to understand that at this particular node of time, what may not look perfect could be purely a projection of your own judgment. Absolutely. That's all it can be. Yeah. <laughs> and here's the other side of it. You can't control everything. No. Sorry. Um, you know, it was Observe never. Observe and more allow. I love was, those two words. It's also, yeah, you create your own reality, but guess what? Reality is creating you at the same time. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, you know, this, the, you know, if you try to step back, here's, here's, a, here's an exercise for the moment. Try to step back and imagine that you are the entire human race. No. Oh, in I microcosm, am. in microcosm. I and therefore... Been. And step back even further, and Sophia is the planetary intelligence, all the emotions that that being went through in her so-called fall from grace, because it was never meant for one of these beings to ever exit the galactic core. Mm. That was a, a mistake not looked for. That was an error not looked for. That was a potential in the experiment, never sought or intended, but it happened. Okay, this is where we get into the realm of unexpected or chaos theory, yeah. be that as it may. So when we get into these variables, you understand that all emotion, all human emotion, all, all human fears and failings, all human aspirations and, and delights, uh, the, highs and the, of the highs of the highs and the lowest of the lows, they're not something being experienced or felt in isolation. They're happening to everybody all at the same time they're happening to the gods and the goddesses all at the same time yeah okay the thing is do you if you don't understand that then you're at the mercy of those feelings emotions and energies if you allow them to help you remember who you really are then you come into the moment with them and they're your friends yeah Every yeah. one of them, even the anger, even the disappointment, even Absolutely. the grief. Absolutely, it's it, it it's all the all of us that we perceive, and in that perception, we in the moment the best we can, feeling Absolutely. everything. So feeling the chaos, feeling the corruption, feeling the joy and the bliss, and they're not at the same moment. They're in their own individual moment because you yeah. can't occupy two spaces at the same time. So, you know, and I, except in our multidimensionalness. Oh, in the realm of the absolute, absolute works good, but, <laughs> <laughs> but in the world of polarity, hello. <laughs> right, right. But again, you wouldn't, if you didn't have the contrast, how would you know the difference? That's exactly right. And it's like when I started <laughs> entertaining, living in the moment, I, I was so frustrated. And I didn't get that that was the moment at the time, because I had this idea of what the living in the moment was. And I, I feel like a lot of people do. And that it's, a, it's a, a great idea. And it's a great goal. And it's a, maybe even a motivator, you know, to practice something that's really has extreme value. Because once you get to the other side of having the practice become a habit, living in the moment is so weak, even in its terror, even if it, even in its, you know, evilness, even in its, you know, whatever the existentialism that you talked about. Yeah. It, and and because this is what I learned. Everything that you fully embrace in the moment energy energetically shifts on its own when you embrace it fully. It, it's kind of following that thing of not resisting, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. And allowing, observing and allowing. I love those two words you brought up. I'm feeling to share something about 
the immediacy of what it's like to experience a big moment. Thank you. Um, I'll tell you the secret to that for me. Okay. Wasn't something deliberate. It wasn't something about I'm going to sit and meditate until I am in the now. Yeah. Or I am in, you know, in presence. I did a lot of that at the time that's, that this uh, event occurred. I was doing a lot of that. But strangely enough, what happened was the, the night before I was uh, with somebody and we were having a great time and just laughing, relaxing and relaxing and relaxing and relaxing. And the next morning I got up to go to work and I was thought, I'm just going to have a shower and get to work. And you know, I was just kind of in that that hazy place where you're not really thinking about anything. You're not really like worried about what's going to happen today. You're not making any plans. Maybe that's a meditative state. I don't know. I just know that I was in the shower. <laughs> and all of a sudden, everything started slowing down. The water hitting my body got slower and slower. I wasn't calling on anything. I wasn't doing anything. I wasn't intending anything. I was in a complete place of... In the moment. I was in, in a kind of a zero state. I didn't know what, uh, you know, yeah. what else. How do you... How do you take what cannot be described with words and label it with words? Right. Um, but when that moment happened where everything, where I was paying attention, I was just paying attention, paying attention. I was completely attentive to what was happening with water hitting my skin. That's all I was paying attention to. And yeah. in that moment, the bottom fell out, the sky opened, and I was everywhere all at once. Yeah. And the voice was saying, the voice that was everywhere and nowhere was saying, I am the water. I am your body. Mm. I am your shoes that you wear. I am the car that you drive and the food that you eat. I am over you. I am under you. I am everywhere and nowhere. I've ruined my life for two weeks because when it was <laughs> over in 15 seconds and I was back in linear time and everything. Can I get out of the shower and get dressed and go to work now? But it shifted your reality, yeah. And there have been other moments like that, only I didn't recognize them as such. They happened in my childhood. They happened when I was doing psychedelics in the 60s. They happened in various times in different ways, but nothing, nothing before or then has been equivalent to that moment in a shower exactly and when, when i was doing the most mundane of things yeah, so yeah. i'll tell you when 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 the moment happens you won't be the one to initiate it exactly that's exactly right i that's that's my experience as well with awakening the process of awakening seems to be unexpected and momentary in the moment. And it like brings you to, to an awareness of the full moment that you're not thinking about. Yeah. Thought is not involved. It is it's it's like, not it's involved like, at all. It's like you're looking at a window with a blind drawn and the next moment the blind's up. That's and so you, don't, cool. you don't remember seeing the blind going up. That's right. But all, but all of a sudden the sun is full face on you. That's it. <laughs> That's beautiful, That's Isaac. I didn't know you had that experience. That's beautiful. Oh, I have sat on a lot of things since <laughs> since what happened to me in '94, and since you knew me in '98. So, you know, this is this. Um, you know, it's time. It's just time for me not to hold back and and just tell my story. And it's like yeah. it's like I don't have to prove anything. That's right. Uh, but I think that you know, that time was definitely the demarcation point between everything lived up to that point in time when I was 44 and then 43 and then boom, it switched over. And can, can a life, anybody's life change that quickly? Absolutely. Absolutely. Honey, I fell off a cliff. I know you did. <laughs> what did that feel like, by the way? <laughs> Not when you hit, but the falling well, part. <laughs> okay, so I, you know, my expectation was was very um, mundane. It, you know, I'm going on a hike with two friends. 
Yeah. At the bottom of the hike, at the bottom of the hill, we claimed that we would do it in silence. Oh. That we would not chatter with each other, that we would stay focused on the land. And this was one of the times that I started like, I just want to see if I can stay focused on one thing at a time, staying in the moment, right? So it was great until the, the ride the ride home, <laughs> you know, the climb down the mountain is when I fell. When I fell, I didn't expect that I would fall, first of all, because I'm I had dancer body, you know, I had dancer ability. I was really strong and like even in my toes, I was very strong everywhere. And so it didn't occur to me that I could even fall, even doing the toughest part of the hike. But I did. As I was falling, this presence came in and literally took over and changed my life forever because I could never, ever go back. I couldn't undo, nor would I want to, that experience because I had been praying, praying it in. I had been praying to be the best self that I could, the best I will to will thy will, you know? Calling calling it in, yeah. So how I've been living ever since that time has been in what I can, I can literally say is my experience of the miracle of life. And so for to take the the mundane self and bring it into, okay, so let's have a conversation about what does it like to really live in the moment? Took me on a whole nother path of the ego self trying to figure it out. And then, and then putting it into different contexts that ended up being blown apart. Because as I grow, each context comes into nothing. It's, yeah. it's just another thought form. Yeah. Until all of the presence is just presence. This is like in the shower. Yeah, like in the shower. Yeah. I just, I just remembered one of the other episodes that was not so nice <laughs> like you had or seemingly not so nice was the motorcycle accident i had i remember that one go tell it oh that was that was i i can't recall if that happened before or after that episode uh in the shower i it might have been leading up to it uh went out on a ride on a sunday afternoon trying to find my reiki master's ranch his farm Um, I thought, oh, I've never been down that part of Lane County. I think I'm just going to get on my bike, you know, big street motorcycle, 1100 cc's, um, a very fast bike, which I didn't really abuse. I didn't, I didn't like going fast on it. And I got lost in his country road out near where he lived. I didn't know where I was. And all of a sudden my thoughts just started drifting. I just started feeling it was kind of an overcast day, but warm. It was in May. And I was just kind of like dissociating a bit from everything around me because I was lost somewhere. I don't know where I went. I really just don't know where I went. Last moment before I realized I just, oh my God, there's a hard right hand sweeper to the to the right. Wow. The road's banking to the right around a, a kind of a cliff face around to the right. And I looked straight ahead and I looked at this curve and I looked at the speedometer. I said, there's no way in hell I'm going to make this. And that's when instinct, pure instinct, seemed to just say, okay, clutch in, break down, downshift. I was doing everything I could to bring myself down under 15 miles an hour so I could make this corner. But it was it was too late. I was like overcommitted, all of a sudden across the double yellow line, and I hit the other side where there's loose gravel on the shoulder of the road, and the bike went airborne with oh, me on it. Wow. You know, 550 pounds landed on my left leg on the left side in, in a grassy berm in front of this row of vegetation. I don't know what it was, oh. like ivy or, or a hedge or something. And I just remember thinking, oh, boy, I've ruined the bike. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, in the fall, 
somewhere in the fall, my left foot came out of the boot. So the boots on the foot peg underneath between the grass and 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 the, and this is not the first time I've had a motorcycle accident, but this was the strangest one. And it was completely solo and I was completely lost somewhere else at the moment before realizing, oops, I'm in trouble. Wow. Uh, where was I? I don't know. And I landed. I w op op woke up. I'm still here. You know, the windscreen on the front of the bike's twisted and uh, you know, the handlebars are twisted, the forks are twisted. I climbed out, I skithered, slithered to the left and got out from underneath the bike. My leg's fine, my, my ankle hurt, the boot's still under the bike. Um, and I stood up, limped a little bit, took my helmet off and a full face helmet on. And I noticed these people coming up the road toward me in a pickup truck. They had just backed out of a, a driveway, a dirt road, saw the whole thing happen and were coming mm -hmm. toward me as fast as mm -hmm. possible. My goodness. And they got there. And he got out of the truck. It was a woman and two guys. And they came up and just, are you okay? And put their hand on my shoulder. I said, I think so. I don't know what happened. Um, I just was going too fast and was, lost focus somewhere. And I, I didn't realize I was going to have to make this turn. And I just went straight. And he says, you're damn lucky. I said, I guess so. And he says, no, you don't understand. He says, look behind you. And I turned around and I looked real close at the hedge. And I looked what was in the middle of the hedge was a tree about four foot in diameter. I would have headed right toward it. I got chicken skin. And he said, uh, do you think this thing will still run? They got me to get the bike up, they helped me straighten the forks. I started it up, it ran. And he says, are you sure you don't want us to call an ambulance? I said, no, I think I'm okay. And I drove in that kind of half dilapidated state all the way back to Eugene, 40 miles away. Wow. And got in and by that time my ankle had swollen up and I was absolutely in shock and didn't know it yeah I, I knew something major had happened to me so I called up my friend who lived around the corner and she came and says you get in the shower right now and get hot water on that ankle I will be over with my flower essences shortly nice and she came over and I was laying in bed and she said tell me what happened before she even did anything, she said, tell me what happened. And I told her what happened. And she just laughed. She just started laughing, you know, kind of <laughs> giggling and laughing. I said, what are you laughing about? And she said, in the moment you were airborne, your personality and spirit had a conversation. And spirit says, you better let go now. And your body got it. Oh, I got chicken skin again. And I just went, I was, I just started, I just burst out in tears. I just completely went from the shock to complete catharsis in that second. Wow. And she just laughed and kept handing me tissues and going, this is just perfect. This is great. Okay. Now here's some flower essences. Take this, take this star Bethlehem, you know, and you know, all this stuff she's feeding me. And I'm just an absolute emotional wreck because I knew the truth of that moment, which That's was like, yeah. You needed to get it in the body. The spirit's in charge. You needed to hear that your soul is in charge. Yep. That you needed to feel it viscerally because yeah, it could have turned out a hell of a lot worse than it did. I know that, right? Okay. So that's exactly why didn't you have hit the tree? Why didn't your leg that got landed on by the whole 550 pounds? Wait, wait, wait. Why? So this because I the same. You know what the I'll me. tell you what the reason was, but go oh, ahead. Wait. My point is, I asked myself, I landed on the boulder on my back. Why didn't I have one broken bone on my back? I had 22 broken bones, but not one in my back. Why did I start having mystical experiences immediately when I woke up why did i wake up i mean so let's hear your cheryl i want to call you cheryl <laughs> shana, know, okay. shana that's a hell of a way to get a kundalini awakening going <laughs> <laughs> i wouldn't recommend it i don't recommend it no but I, that's um, why i share the story that's why i'm here to share the story to so, be to be perfectly honest that moment that moment brought me into full presence of something i had been avoiding I had been avoiding all my life. And it was something that was pointed out to me by my, my mentor 
through the first two years of the Kundalini awakening and, and turned up, she was past president of the New York State Psychiatry Association and a psychosynthesis counselor to boot. She said to me quite face to face one night, one day when I was in Los Angeles and we met up for coffee for the first time. She said, I know what you're thinking. I know how much you just want to get out of here and go home. And you've been doing that a lot through this um. life, haven't you? And that motorcycle, almost fatal motorcycle accident, brought it all home, period. This yeah. has got to be confronted with. This has got to be dealt with now. Yeah. And that's, what the, that's why that moment needed to happen. That moment was about get clear that there is no getting out and going somewhere else and thinking, it's going to be better somewhere else. I don't have to deal with this. Right. It was about me getting more here. Yes. Okay. Because none of that stuff that happened two years later in Sedona or, you know, beyond that could not have happened without that moment. Exactly. Exactly. Couldn't and have happened. For me, it was very similar to that where I got, <clears throat> because I asked that question. I had gotten, uh, after I healed in four weeks, I was stayed in meditation for most of my day for about a year because I had a lot of questions, but I was also getting a lot of information that I that was answering questions that I didn't have to ask. Yeah. So at one time I said, okay, so how come? No, no bruising, no bruising. How come no broken bones in the back? Mm -hmm. And they and I was told you had to have the experience only you had to have to wake you up, to get you moving, to have your you relax the old self that was you know in the wah wah mode, the victim mode, the fear mode, you know, and to to be able to express the message for the future of humanity. And I was like, oh my God, wow. And I knew that that was the truth. And I just, I let it be. Then I started embracing it, scary as hell as it was. Mm -hmm. I started embracing it. So here we are. It's your part in the micro, in the macrocosm, but you, you know, you have your microcosm part in it. And it's, it's, right. it's you have your, you know, you're one of the particles that has this particular piece. So, yeah. you know, um, and, and everybody does, you know. Right. So, so the caveat was I didn't have to be living in a wheelchair to do it. Thank no. Thank you, God. Thank no. you. Yeah. I was very, no, very it, grateful for that. But if, even if that had been the case, you would have done it anyway. I, that's right. I would have done it anyway. Exactly. Yeah. So for me, it was just showing me where I was trying to run away and escape. You know, for me, it was, you know, um, not facing up to what it was that I really wanted to do or how I really wanted to show up, you know, that, you know, so checking out would have been easy, supposedly. Supposedly, right. Yeah, supposedly. <laughs> Good idea like, at the time. Bad like move. Like you had a thought. <laughs> yeah. God so, has another plan. Now, so if we look, we look at what's extrapolate that to what's going on now. It's like nobody gets to run away from what this means, what's going on. Okay, nobody gets to run away, and nobody gets to hide behind what they think they knew that's based on what has been. And this is where I feel what the unhelpful part is is still trying to solve a current moment issue uh -huh. or crisis using. What has gone before is the model. So if anything, you know, that's that's challenging the orthodoxy, I don't care what angle or what part of our culture or our species is is invested in orthodoxy and continuing it, it's not going to solve. You know, we cannot continue being a problem reaction solution type of species where, oh, we've got to fix this problem and we create five more. Yeah. Yeah, from we, that solution. Um, and I, I think this is this is one of the things that you look at the multitude, the multi, the multiplicity of issues or problems or however you want to think about that 
across the horizon, it's like, what do you focus on first? You know, and how does it all interrelate? And it becomes, then, then, then you have the, the situation where the entire species is in overwhelm right now going, I just want to take care of my family and look at it and have a job. And, you know, right. it's like the, the, the default thing is to fall back on the known and what has been. And that is what is, that's what people are being appealed to on. Yeah. Well, and then, then they get the message. Well, this is the new normal. Oh God. You know, if this is the new normal, then I do want to check out where's my motorcycle. <laughs> right. But every day is a new normal every day is the creation or the opportunity to create or be in the past. It's like bringing your conscious awareness into, well, if you don't like what's going on and you have been praying for things to change, then you might just want to relax into the change and see how your creativity makes it better for you. I will add something to this Thank conversation you. that I have ignored till this point because it just popped in. Oh. The, the, the thing that is, I think, okay, I'm putting out, I'm going out on a limb, but you know, I'm used to that. <laughs> the thing that we are missing and is also creating a lot of the mental and emotional problems is pleasure. We have not paid attention to the role of pleasure as a health enhancer. As a or what bringing happened? oneself into the moment, a health enhancer. As a health. Yeah. Health, health. Oh, health, okay. Health, en an enhancement Enhancer, of oh, gotcha, okay. Of health, pleasure, yes. um, and the cultivation of pleasure, and pleasure for its own sake, is not a distraction or a failing. Okay, and, no. and, and so I'm going to soapbox a little bit here. It's like, I think this is the thing that's missing right now. Human touch and human contact is pleasurable. Absolutely. Enjoying food is pleasurable. Right. Playing with your pets or cuddling with your pets is pleasurable. Anything that you are ignoring because of what is going on is taking you out of that moment of pleasure. Right. Right. And how necessary that is for your life to keep evolving to have the balance, the contrast, like you said earlier. It will also take you out of time. Oh, when you are focused like on, on petting a cat on your lap, you're focused on making love with yourself or someone else. When you're focused on enjoying banana split, or you're focused on looking at a sunset for an hour, you know, as it happens from 5 until 6 p.m. if you're in Hawaii, yeah. Maybe I'll see the green flash tonight. Maybe I won't. I know, right? <laughs> okay. When you're when you're allowing yourself to enjoy, the self disappears. Yeah. Because you are no longer involved in the troubles of the self. Yeah. And they'll still be there tomorrow. <laughs> you know, they're not going anywhere yeah. because that is just part of the journey. But the thing is, if you are renouncing or renuncia about the things of beauty and pleasure that are in this world to enjoy, including yourself, what's the point? Well, see, then that's where I like to take this conversation. And you just did it for me. Oh, <laughs> it is where we where what are the gifts and blessings of living in the moment and, and being know. human? That's right. You just stated it so perfectly. Wow. Well, this could be this could be a fruitful seed for another time, but I I I, I feel oh. that that's it's, that's that's a footnote that's important to have here. Yeah, yeah. In terms of bringing oneself into the now or bringing oneself into the present moment, and being completely involved with it. I mean, you can do that with building a you know a model ship or doing crocheting. I, anybody anybody feels drawn to whatever gives them pleasure puts them in that relationship of being creative without an agenda. Yeah, yeah. It, and it's like when I share with my clients, you know, when you're driving, you know, like after you've dropped your kids off to school and you're driving to the grocery store, just say, as an example, right. you're with yourself. Where is your mind? 
What if you said to yourself, how am I doing? How am I doing right now? How am I am I feeling the love? <laughs> or am I am I thinking about what I'm gonna be doing two hours from now or when exactly. I have to pick up the kids? The whole rest you know. of the day. Or what you have to do to tick off your list. I'm I'm never good at shutting off monkey mind sometimes. I mean, you know, it's like this conversation in the head, you know, who's having the conversation here? <laughs> Well, I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking no. about maybe interrupting it so that you have a different conversation. I know, but I'm, I'm thinking is, about the know, I'm more... thinking about the the mom and you know in the in the <laughs> the mom in the Chelsea Cadillac, i.e., four by four, that's dropped her off her kids off at school, <laughs> and and she's you know she she's where she's in that mode that, that do do mode. Yeah, got to get it done. For the family, then I'll relax. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. Which comes <laughs> never. <laughs> it never. Yeah, it comes never exactly. I'm like, and what do you do? You know, when you're in the shower. Good point. What do you do when you're brushing your teeth? Those are moments when you're by yourself. Yeah. But the but the the distraction is all around because you give it. You give yourself to the distraction. Instead, you could just go. Yeah, how's it going? How's my heart? Am I with my God? You know, does my divine, you know, brushing my teeth? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm brushing God's teeth. I'm <laughs> flossing Goddess's mouth. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm enjoying this banana split Sunday. Are we having fun? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, God, let's have one. <laughs> Wow. It is, yeah, that it's that's powerful stuff because that brings that multidimensionality into the enjoyment of the experience. Yes. Or something like that. Absolutely. Oh, sweetheart, you yeah. are such a joy to talk to. I am so grateful that you carved out a little bit of time for us and oh, to hopefully no problem. help some other people, you know, get something that they wouldn't have gotten. Yeah, I hope just so too. You and our, you know, talking together. Well, I appreciate your invitation and and your your warmth and your great interviewers and and Aww. yeah. So keep on, keep on, keeping on. Thank you. I, I'm Thank very you. grateful. People have been saying yes to me, so this has been really fun. So Absolutely. I'm gonna it better be fun. <laughs> <laughs> You know, you know what Ariel said a long time ago through Tashir Tachi Ren? If it doesn't feel like fun, it probably isn't. It probably isn't, <laughs> and I won't do it because fun is my middle name. <laughs> I attest to that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I'm going to put your website in the description. Oh, thanks. So yeah. people will be able to contact you when they want and or if they want. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Thank and you. I will send you this link so you can use it whenever you want or however you want i can put it on my youtube channel absolutely okay. because cool. we are we're infusing the 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 in the transmission of something that's bigger than us and we both got it by accident you could say <laughs> metaphorically and theoretically. as you wish <laughs> And, and we're fortunate and we know it that we live to tell it, to talk about it and expand it and bring it into the embrace and hug that we so desperately look for right now. Yeah. Let's and hug and whoever name. sees this or, 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 or stumbles across it or whatever, you know, a million hugs to you. And, and we all know everyone's going through a lot of challenge here. Yeah. And you know what? somehow or another at some level everything's okay it's okay and to remember that the change that we've been asking for may not look the way we want but it's still change that's right yeah it's still it's, change here you know i would like to, basically because you've said that i have to finish on my side with saying okay. the one thing that no one can promise you is certainty do not give your power away to an authority that promises you certainty because yeah. that is not going to be very helpful that's right in the long run 
Yeah. Okay. Keep your consent wisely used. Exactly. Wisely. So I'm just going to end this right now. Okay. With a great big thank you. I love you. I can't wait to talk to you again. And Me thank too. you, everyone, for listening this far. Thank you very much, Shana. And I look forward to a conversation either in this mode or just casual. So you be in, how we say, happy land and go out and enjoy your wonderful beachside wonderfulness. My beachside and my, the sunsets. Oh. Oh. Uh, and the full moon it, last night. <gasps> it's to live for. It is. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we're both from the Northeast, okay? You know, <laughs> yeah, I'm from the Northeast anyway. And it's like, I just, oh, it's to live for. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway. ending the recording now. All right. Love you.